Hey everyone, Kyle Prolux here, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing an unboxing assembly and overview of the Prolux 2.0 standard model. This is going to be the non powerhead version, and it's going to be um, the standard toolkit, and it's going to be the residential model, so it's going to be that blue and gray color. You can see right here on the box, uh, inch and a half standard model. Um, this unboxing and assembly will also work with the inch and a half commercial pro model. So if you have the black and yellow one, unboxing, assembly, and overview, it's going to be the same. Some of the specs for the commercial model is slightly different, and that's pretty much a handful of things, but I'll cover that in this video. All right, so without further ado, we're going to cut the tape on the box and get this bad boy open. All right, so we have this big insert. You have the free maintenance tool. The wand right here, I'll show you how this wand goes together and how to use it. Inch and a half hose. A floor tool with a squeegee blade. The low pile carpet tool. Upholstery brush. Mini turbo. Duster brush. Crevice tool. Backpack vacuum right here. And then you have the owner's manual. You can find all the specs and everything in here or you can watch this video. So that is the unboxing process. So I'm going to get everything out of its uh, packaging and then I'll show you guys how to assemble it. Alright, so I just have the vacuum, the wand, the hose, and I just have this tool. Again, the assembly process that I'm showing you now is also going to work for the inch and a half commercial model. The only difference is going to be the colors, but everything else um, assembly wise will be the same. But when I go into the overview and specs, the commercial model will be slightly different. I'm going to start off with the hose. The hose is going to have two ends on it. One's going to be an elbow or 90 degrees. The other one's just going to be straight. You need to take the elbow piece and you need to connect it to the hose port on top of the vacuum. So go ahead and get the elbow piece and just push it on. If you live in a colder climate, sometimes the elbow piece is a little stiff, so you can use a hair dryer to warm it up a little bit so it's easier to put on. But you shouldn't need to do that. All right, so now that we got the hose attached, we're going to focus on the wands. The wands are gonna come in two pieces. You're gonna have the lower wand, you're gonna have the upper wand, and then you're gonna have this bicycle style clamp, and I'll show you guys how to use this properly. So the clamp right now is pretty loose, so we need to tighten that, and to do that, you need to tighten the set screw right here. So righty tighty, lefty loosey, and as you tighten this down, the clamp right here is going to start tightening. So when you add the wand, it's not gonna fall out. When you go to install the lower wand, make sure you unclamp the clamp. All right, so got this thing a little tighter than it was before. So I'm gonna take that lower wand and I'm gonna slide it in. And then I'm going to test fit everything by tightening this clamp right here. So that is still pretty loose. So again, unclamp it and just tighten that set screw. Close the clamp. And that is, that is pretty tight now. So I'm gonna unclamp that and I'm gonna slide this down just a little bit. All right, so that is how you assemble the two piece wand. Next step is you're gonna wanna take the straight piece of the other side of the hose and you're going to push the wand into it. Quick note, the wand has this raised lip. Make sure you push the hose part all the way over that lip. It's gonna use friction fit to make sure the wand doesn't fall out when you're using everything. Okay, so now we have the wand attached to the hose. The last step is attaching a tool. Uh, make sure when you check your tools that the floor tools have this curved neck on it. If it's flat, the tools are gonna sit flush on the floor. Again, just slide the tool on, kind of give it a twist. These tools do not have button locks, so they use friction fit. So that's what it looks like. And then to remove it, just twist it off. And then you can add any type of tool. So here's a crevice tool. This already has a, an adapter installed. Slides right onto the wand. So this is what it looks like when it's fully assembled. You have the hose, the wand, and the tool. Um, I'm going to take the hose off and I'm going to set all this aside and I want to go over the straps and how to use the straps correctly and how to get them 
loose or tight to fit your body style. All right, so we need to unbuckle the top buckle right here. And then we need to unbuckle the bottom waist strap. So I'm gonna put this on. It's just like putting a backpack on. All right, so this thing is really loose on me. It's hanging down really low. So you just need to find, I don't know what to call these, the little extra strap tabs. And you're gonna pull those tight and kind of adjust it as needed so it's comfortable. And then to adjust on the actual buckle mechanism, if you lift up, it's going to loosen the strap. And then you can just buckle the top buckle just like any type of buckle. And then here is the bottom waist strap and buckle. Um, there's a lot of slack in here, so again, grab the strap tabs on the side and pull in. I have a very skinny build, so there's about three inch gap right here between my stomach and the buckle. But depending on your body type, it might be more of a snug fit, but this fits pretty well. To go over some of the features of the strap um, on the right side, as if you're wearing it, you're gonna have a little onboard tool storage. So here we have the three basic tools, crevice, upholstery, duster, and these just slide into the loops. So that's what it looks like. You can add the tools onto the strap if you want, and then you can just easily pull them out. We have the power cord on the left side, and on the right side, Here's the power switch, so it's easy to turn it on and off just by bending your arm backwards. And then the power cord plugs into any normal wall outlet. Another feature of Backpack Vacuum is we have a, another model for the residential and commercial, and that's gonna be the power head version. You have a standard tool kit 2.0, you can buy the additional power head kit if you find out that you need it. Assembly process compared to the hose one and tool I just showed you is very similar. The only difference is when you put the electrical hose onto the hose port, you're gonna have like a four inch or five inch power cord. And that power cord just plugs into the top of the unit right here. And then you might notice this rectangle hole at the top. We do have a battery operated version and they just use the same molded body parts. So if you notice this hole, it's just the same body. Battery operated one, so you can ignore it. You could put stuff in there if you want, I don't care. Um, on the side again, here's the power cord. This cord is 35 feet long, and then you have cord wraps right here. So you can wrap it around for easy storage. So now that we kind of went over the boxing and assembly process, and then how to use the straps and everything, I want to just quickly go over the specs and talk about the unit itself real quick. Start with the filtration. This is going to have two physical filters. So to gain access to those filters is you need to remove the dirt bin and remove the dirt bin at the top of the curve of the handle, there's a button, push that down, pull it off. Do want to make a quick note, I'm getting a lot of emails about people breaking this button. So when you go to put the dirt bin back on, be gentle. I think what a lot of people are doing, they're just, they're just slamming it in and it's breaking the button. So when you go to put the dirt bin back in, just be gentle with it, okay? Our products are made to last if they're treated properly. Of course, if you abuse any type of thing, it's gonna break. So with the dirt bin off, the first HEPA filter is gonna be inside the dirt bin, so we need to remove the top lid. On this side, it has two icons, an unlock and lock, and you have an arrow pointing to the lock. So that means the top lid is locked in. So we need to twist this arrow to the unlock position. We're going counterclockwise, pull that off. And then you have to twist the filter counterclockwise. You can pull that out. And then you're also gonna have this self-cleaning vortex filter. If you guys wanna know how to put it in properly, make sure the larger diameter of the self-cleaning vortex filter goes in first. And then you have tabs at the bottom of the filter. Line those tabs up with the slots. Once you got it in, turn it clockwise, lock it into position. And then we need to put the top lid back on. So we have the arrow lined up to unlock, twist it clockwise to lock it. So that is going to be the first HEPA filter. Second HEPA filter is going to be directly above the motor or directly underneath the dirt bin. Same thing, unlock and lock. So we need to turn it counterclockwise to unlock it, pull the lid off. Here is other filter. And then get it on, turn it 
clockwise to lock it. Um, another filter is going to be the three stages of cyclonic filtration. So it's going to be this giant tube inside the dirt bin. To gain access to that, take the top lid off, take the filter out, take the vortex filter out, and then just pull up on it to remove it. And then you can take this apart even more. There's this ring right here next to this blue tube. Turn that, pull it off, it breaks down, and then to remove this actual tube, you have three screws holding it on. Depending on what you're cleaning, I definitely recommend taking this apart, I don't know, once every month, once every other month, and just washing everything, getting all the dirt and debris out of it just so your filtration stays superior. And then once you have everything out, you have easy access to clean inside the dirt bin if it's really filthy. To release the contents inside the dirt bin, you have this button right here, and then the trap door falls down, and then to close it, just close the box. Alright, so that is the filtration. So you have two physical filters, and then you have the three stage cyclonic filtration tube in the middle. So, I showed you guys how to gain access to the filters, how to remove the lid, how to take the cyclonic filtration out, how to put everything back together. Next, I want to just talk about specs. All right, so I want to quickly just go over the specs of the unit itself, and then I'll just quickly talk about the hose and what and tools. Okay, so like I mentioned, this has a 35 foot cord. The hose is going to be six feet long. It's going to be 1.5 inches in diameter, so it's a commercial size hose. Um, the decibel reading on this is 85, so it just sounds like any normal vacuum cleaner when you turn it on. It has 125 CFM, so plenty of suction. It has 84 inches of water lift, so it has it can pick stuff up really easily. If you're not sure what water lift is, I would read into it. And then it has 1,301 air watts and the dirt bin volume capacity is 1.9 liters. So the motor specs on the residential or standard 2.0 are gonna be the exact same as the commercial units, so the black and yellow one. The only difference, um, the black and yellow unit is going to have a 50 foot extension cord that is included and it's going to have um, a six foot hose just like the residential. Um, the only difference is it's going to have some more protection and the warranty on the commercial is slightly different. So the warranty on the unit you see now, so the residential or standard is going to be a five year motor and three year body. So if you have any issues with it within that time period, please email us, we'll get you taken care of. The commercial unit on the other hand, it's going to have a three year motor, three year body. So the commercial unit is going to have two years less on the motor compared to this. Um, but you can buy the powerhead kits um, for the standard or commercial if you opted out for just the standard toolkit. We, we also sell the power nozzle versions of the standard and commercial. We'll have an unboxing video on that as well. Um, this includes a different head hose uh, wand and the tools are slightly different. Okay, onto the hose. Uh, very basic, it's a six foot hose. Elbow piece which connects to the vacuum and then you have a straight piece which connects to the wand. And again, this is 1.5 inches in diameter. So it's gonna have a larger diameter for more larger dirt and debris. Now, this is gonna be our telescopic wand. I showed you guys how to adjust the clamp. So the wand is snug and doesn't come out or slide out. So again, unclamp the clamp and then you can loose loosen or tighten the set screw. The only thing I do not like about this type of wand, I'll be very transparent, is once you put it in and you start pulling it out, it's going to scratch the surface of the wand. Like, I, you can't see it, but I can notice a slight scratch, but over time it's gonna just get beat up, but it's a wand, it's a vacuum. All right, so lastly, I wanna talk about the tools. The tools you see here are gonna be very similar to the tools included with the commercial unit. The only difference is the commercial unit's not gonna get this tool. So what you see right now is what's included with the commercial unit. Uh, the standard unit just receives this extra floor tool. So let's go over the tools real quick. You have your basic vacuum attachments right here, the upholstery, duster, and crevice. You have a mini turbo or pet hair tool. This is gonna work great if you have a dog that sheds a lot. So if you use this on your couch, chair, um, you can use it on your stairs. You can also use it for car interior. It's gonna do a really great job picking up that dog hair along with just normal cleaning. This right here is going to be more of a carpet attachment. So depending on the type of carpet you have, this is the tool you're gonna to wanna to use. If you have low pile or 
commercial carpet. This thing's gonna work really great. Um, this will um, kind of decrease in performance if you if you have shaggy carpet. It will still pick stuff up, but it's not gonna do as great because the thickness of the fibers on the plush carpet is gonna give this tool a very hard time. Um, I do not recommend using this on hard floor surfaces. This is very hard plastic, so there is a chance it might scratch your flooring. Just test it out on a small area. Um, this is going to be the tool for floors, like hard floor surfaces, so laminate, vinyl, tile, concrete, hardwood floors. This is going to be your go-to tool. It has horsehair bristles. The front is going to have, the middle bristles are going to sit up higher so it's able to go over dirt and debris. It also includes a squeegee attachment, which you can put in the back just for that extra help when going over hard floor surfaces. Because it includes a squeegee blade does not mean that this vacuum is rated for wet pickup. Do not use this to suck up any wet messes. It will void your warranty and it will destroy your vacuum. So that's pretty much it for today's video. Um, quickly unboxed it, assembled it, and quickly talked about everything in general. Again, everything I talked about, it's gonna be very similar to the inch and a half commercial model. The only difference is going to be the cord and the warranty and then you get one less tool. And then of course you get black and yellow instead of gray and blue. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can email us at service at prolixcleaners.com or you can go to our website, www.prolixcleaners.com and check out the listing. We also have more videos of these 2.0s in action on our YouTube channel. But I'm Kyle Prolux, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.